important to follow up. You know, we talked about the bid opening process while working remotely and uh, submissions being done electronic only. And if you have any questions about that, uh, the new RFP process training video is posted in the training center. I'll show you where that is. So for those of you that are going to be putting out new RFPs shortly, we have the new process laid out in nice, clean video, um, as well as those new job aids. Uh, also, uh, just so you know, we're going to be doing some vendor training um, on how to respond to RFPs. And so a, a new video will be forthcoming that will put the link in as a part of the vendor instructions. So those vendor instructions are being added to the technical proposal only as well as the pricing. And that link on how to respond will be in those vendor instructions. Um, and our activity today will be doing a requisition for a release off master. Since that's a very common activity and then our fun fact of the day. So first things first, so we may have kind of a, you know, we may get back to having a shorter um, training Tuesday this week. So are there any questions regarding the CPO notice? Um, we went through it last week, but at the same time, I, I want to provide an opportunity for, for you guys to ask questions, you know, doing bid openings in a new way that we haven't done before. Uh, there, and a lot of times, you know, with situations like this, you don't necessarily think of a question until something comes up too. So um, that's perfectly appropriate. And as you just want to remind you for, you know, any times that you have those bid openings, you know, go back to the CPO notice. Uh, you can read through that. Go take a look at what we talked about last week on the slides in the training center and just give some, some helpful tips on doing the bid opening. Um, we did a, a bid opening FAQ that had some, um, some frequently asked questions that we would want to uh, to work on. Um, also, you know, if there are any questions about uh, electronic submissions only. Um, we have a question. I'm unable to see the video. Clicking the link just results in a message working on it. Um, you know what? I have seen that. Um, what's interesting is I, it, I'm not seeing that, but I have heard others that have ha have that. I will upload, re-upload that again just to make sure that um, it may be something from from our SharePoint site that's getting that. I did send the link around to all the SPOs, so they had that too. Looks like we, we have somebody else that got that same uh, working on it. And we needed to send the um, send the link around. So I'll, I'll, I'll once I get off the call here, I'll re-upload the link and maybe that'll fix it. So thanks for letting me know. Um, another question: Will there be revised IFP and MRF documents indicating electronic submissions only? I'm not sure what MRF documents is, but in terms of the IFB, um, we have that additional attachment that's called the Notice of Electronic Notice of Electronic Submissions Only attachment. That oh RFP, sorry, you know I should have I should have realized that. Um, they that it supersedes all of that. So you know, with us being in a in a bit of a um, you know middle ground here, where you know hopefully. A, a, very soon, we would all be back in our offices and we would be able to go back. So rather than changing all the templates for this brief amount of time, we are just going to have that additional attachment that supersedes all of that. So when you're completing those, I don't think you need to go in and specifically, you know, we don't want you going in and deleting a bunch of things on the template just because there's a risk of deleting, you know, unintentionally deleting something else. Um, but you don't necessarily need to fill out all those, you know, there's like that little table that says, you know, so many original copies and so many, you know, you could just leave that blank. Um, but that additional attachment supersedes anything that would be in the template. So that's, that's a great question. Now, depending on how long this goes, there is a chance that that could change. But for right now, that's going to be our guidance. Um, let's see, should we make it obvious in the solicitations that we're accepting electronic submissions only? Yes, yeah, so that is a, that's a part of what's going to be in, you know, you could put that in the bulletin description. Um, you can, you know, the, that's what that attachment really is. Uh, if you wanted to add additional things, you know, in the title, you could. If you wanted to put it in the bulletin description, you could, because the vendor is going to see that as well. But as a part of the attachment that really walks through that, because of COVID-19, the state of Illinois is only accepting electronic responses. You know, paper responses will not be accepted. That's a part of those vendor instructions. So 
short answer to ask your question, you know, to, to answer your question, yes, you know, make it obvious in the solicitations that you are accepting electronic submissions only. And I believe by putting those instructions in there, that, that really does. Um, let's see, I missed the last meeting. Did the IFB template contract change? No. So uh, going back to just the previous question, we aren't changing the template at this time because it's, we're, we're not exactly sure how long this is going to last. So we just have that additional attachment that instructs the vendor that they're, you know, the reasoning why they're only accepting uh, electronic submissions. Uh, where do we find the attachment? Okay, perfect. Let's go out and we'll show you. So if you go to CPO GS website, it's, it's in the same page where we have all the IFP templates, RFP templates, contract information. And that is in the procurement resources library. In the solicitation and contract templates and forms. So this, like I said, this is where you see all the IFP templates, forms A, forms B. If you scroll down the bottom, there's a nice big new icon next to that that has the notice of electronic submission only attachment. So this is that document. Let me scroll a little bit so you can see. So this is what they're what we're talking about. Pursuant to CPO notice 2020.06, state agencies shall only accept electronic submissions, et cetera, et cetera, and walks through that. So this document supersedes anything that would be in the template. You know, it talks about um, you know, small purchases can still be emailed. Um, this is for IFBs and RFPs. So go out there and, and grab that and that'll be attached. And so we updated um, the uh, like the RFP job aid to include this. Now for small purchases, we've this had we've had this question pop up. Vendors always could have emailed anyway. They aren't accepting paper responses. So that might be something you want to add as a part of your vendor instructions for small purchases. Um, I do believe that most of our vendors are either emailing or they are submitting through bid buy. I, th I don't think there are a lot of vendors that are submitting paper responses for small purchases. Uh, that's just the feedback that I've received. If that's the case, you would you know, perhaps want to make it even more obvious that you're not accepting paper responses for small purchases. Okay. And really once this all goes back to a lot of agencies, there's nobody there. Right. Um, so this is and something to reiterate for your vendors is this is these measures are being put into place for, for our safety and for their safety. So they don't need to go out and submit via paper. Okay, let me go back to, we had a couple questions pop up. I'm having a bidders conference tomorrow. It is required they attend. And I provide them with a copy of this notice at that time when we posted it, this was not included. So this is going to be something that is going to have to be dealt with with your SPO because um, mandatory bidders conferences were supposed to be delayed. Um, so, and I don't know the specifics for your bidders conference, so you'll need to contact your SPO, okay? Because I, I don't want to be giving, okay, we received approval to hold this. Okay, good. I just didn't want to get it in a situation where I'm saying something different. So yes, you can provide them with a copy of this notice then. Um, with it being tomorrow, you probably want to still do a bid amendment because that way it's in the procurement file that you provided that. Now, I, I don't see anything wrong with also providing it at the bidders conference, but I would suggest, um, you know, discuss this with your SPO, as I said, but I would suggest making a bid amendment anyway. So it is clear that only electronic responses are going to be um, received. And then, you know, there's documentation in the procurement file that that was done. Okay, so going back to our slides. Any other questions before I move on? There used to be a checkbox for electronic responses only for RFPs. Is there a similar checkbox with an IFB? A uh, good question. However, it's you're slightly off there in just that all there is is allow electronic responses. There isn't a electronic responses only. So 
for for certain procurements in general you know in the past for the rfps for instance we would uncheck that allow electronic response so that they could not submit via electronically now that's changed and we have a new rfp process that um, of course now we're only allowing electronic responses uh, but for ifbs you still want to have that box checked right that says uh, we're allowing electronic responses and so that's and that was always the case with ifbs they always could submit electronically but now we're just saying you can only submit electronically okay so let me go back to my slide so our training video for the new rfp process i put a link in here um, and this goes directly to where that page is and we talked about the training video so we're going to do a training video for vendors so they can you know watch a, you know we have the vendor instructions right the vendor instructions are going to be attached to the technical uh, the vendor a different set of vendor instructions are on the cloned bid which is the pricing bid and we're going to add a link to each one of those instructions that has a link to a video that i'm going to do uh, probably later today on how to respond from a vendor standpoint to each one so that way they have paper vendor instructions and then they can also click on the link and go to a video let me make sure i didn't miss any other thought i maybe missed a question i guess not okay so here's a link to that right it's going to take you directly to YouTube. There's going to be a link there. Also, it's in that training center. So if I go back to our CPO GS page, it's in the training center under bid by version 15 training videos. This is also where, of course, you guys know this is where all the training Tuesday videos are. I go to here, have the general navigation uh, for version 15, and then we also have the new RFP process allowing for electronic processes. Okay, so we get to our fun fact. It's National Beer Day. So on April 7th, 1933, FDR took the first step toward ending prohibition and signed a law that allowed people to brew and sell beer for the first time in 13 years. I also don't think this is a coincidence that National Beer Day is on the same day as National No Housework Day, as well as National Coffee Cake Day. So it's too nice of a day today to do any sort of housework anyway. So if your significant other is telling you to, oh, we need to get this done in housework, say, hey, nope, nope, nope. Dave said no. It's today's National No Housework Day. Also, today is National Beer Day. Okay, so now we're going to get into our activity, which is a release off master. Um, I do understand if anybody needs to hop off the call. Um, that's the end of our kind of new information. Now we're going to jump in to do, to do an activity here. I love seeing the comments come in. So I'm gonna walk through how we do a release off a of master. We're just gonna go through the requisition piece and um, go from there. Okay, so let me go to the training environment, go back to my home screen. So there's two ways that we can do a release off master, okay? Um, one is utilizing this new catalog function, which is in uh, version 15, which, by searching the item here, it automatically searches for the release off ma or the, the master contract and then allows you to essentially just shop the way we do online. You fill up a shopping cart and then it, it creates a requisition for you. The other option is you just create a requisition from scratch, then you add in your items in the items tab. So essentially it, it works the same way. Uh, I like the functionality of the catalog and using that kind of enhanced um, enhanced direct release off master just because it's it's quicker it gets you know if, if this whole thing is this requisition is you know a five-step process you know um, the catalog function because kind of starts you at step two it just adds the items for you so let's go in and we can search for um, paper for instance paper we can do a catalog search Right. Okay, so you can scroll down here. You have, if you know the actual 
contract number, you know, it shows that here. And then I can put in the actual, you know, amount of what I'm going to do. Let's say we're going to buy 50 of those. And then when I add to cart, you can see that in my cart up here, I have the 50 items. You can continue to add. When you're done, you can go to the cart. You need to update the quantity you can. Add to new rec. So now we have a requisition that's in process or in, in progress. And you can see that it automatically already links to that master contract. So that's that's what I mean when I say doing it the using the catalog function kind of starts you at step two. Now we still need to go back and do general tab, accounting, any attachments, but my items tab is now done, as well as my vendors tab. So I go back to the general tab. And now I'm going to still complete this the way I, I normally would. So let's see, you know, paper. My department and location is completed. It automatically puts in release, right? Because it, I'm releasing off of that master contract. Um, if I did the non-enhanced version, I'd have to go in and select release. So there's just little things that using that catalog function gets you um, a little bit further ahead in the process. So type code, you would select the type code that was on the original PO. So if, if you don't know, I could go into the items tab and select, uh, go look at that PO and see how that original master contract was procured. Most of them are done competitive sealed bidding, which is IFB, but certainly there are master contracts out there that were, were put in place uh, via competitive sealed proposal. You're not gonna see all these other ones uh, because master contracts aren't done via small purchase Etc. Okay, so competitive sealed bidding. You have your contact information there. Release begin and end date. Now this will be important because this is what the uh, comptroller is going to look at. This release begin and end date. So they're going to the comptroller is going to make sure that um, that this this contract is still live, right? They're not going to pay on a contract that expired last year, right? So release begin can be right now. You know, release end date, it really depends, right? So if this is something that is just an item, you could select, you know, today. And essentially the, um, the, the issue with release begin and end date is it depends, right? So if you're doing a release for something that has uh, services, you actually would have a beginning and end date. If it's just an item, for instance, essentially the begin and end date is when you send me the paper, right? So that's, that's kind of an issue there. One question we get, I should say. And then we save and continue. And move on. So we've already done the items. We've already done the vendors, right? Because using that search function, doing the shopping cart automatically grabs our vendor as well. We do need to do accounting, same way that you always would. Make sure that this goes through the proper approval paths, right? Then we do you know, find it to get all our options or select N since I know I'm going to select not applicable. Not applicable, select, and then we do save based on percentages and rebuild for all items. Just as a reminder, what, that, what that's doing is I'm saving based on percentages, which is saying I'm taking 100% of this not applicable. And then when I rebuild for all items, it takes that not applicable accounting code and applies it to everything in my items tab. To attachments. Now, in terms of an, an, an attachment, um, you would have, you know, if it's something that needs a quote, because a lot of times, you know, some of these master contracts are set up so that there's a per hour fee, for instance. So you would need to get a, a vendor quote specific to certain master contracts. Now, if it's something that is just a line item that is off the shelf, you're not gonna need a vendor quote for that. But sometimes there, you need a vendor quote to match. Uh, so you can make sure that, you know, this vendor isn't charging more than what they signed the contract for, okay? Uh, let's see, I think I missed a couple questions. Let me go back. Clarify the release begin and end dates. Are those dates stated on the master contract? No, this is just the release date for what you are doing. Okay, so you're not selecting, you're not getting one, you're not going into that master contract and putting in 
you know, July 1, 2016 to June 30th, uh, 2021. That's not the case. You're actually doing it when you are releasing off of the contract. Okay, shopping for ICI products. We buy citral green in case quantities and can be found by searching catalog and adding to the requisition. We buy industrial cleaner in 55 gallon drums, but that container is not available in the catalog. How do we process the purchase request for both items? I cannot figure out how to requisition a catalog item and non-catalog item. Hmm, that's a great question. I, I would suggest those actually do them separately because one's going to be um, using, well, I guess they're both ICI products. Hmm. My initial thought was it would just be two different requisitions. Um, one, one doing one item, one doing the other. So that way you wouldn't be dealing with, you know, a catalog item and a non-catalog item on one uh, request. And actually, I think that's probably where I would, that's where I still would go with this. I would still say, you know, do two different requisitions for, for that, for those items. Oh, okay. Industrial cleaners in the catalog, not just, not in 55 drum containers. Okay. That makes sense. Um, now, I, I would just double check that you're using the most up-to-date. I mean, cause that's, I see what you're saying there. That's, that makes it a little bit more confusing because you want the 55 gallon drum. Hmm. You know what? Let's let's circle back to this. I I, I want to I want to follow up with you in person if that's okay. It's listed. Uh, yeah, it's listed as case quantities, which is not, and you need the 55 gallon. So it might be an, an, a, a person. Yeah. So let me let me follow up. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay. So we have our attachments. Um, at this point, if you would put in, you know, you can just follow the job aid. If it, if it is one of those where you needed a vendor quote, you could put the vendor quote. Um, any of your agency specific forms. So like if you have a, you know, an internal purchase request form, you can go in and add that. I'm just going to go in and grab a document so you can see it. Of course, that doesn't, that wouldn't need to be uh, shown to the vendor, right? Because that's just an internal document. So I'll uncheck that, save and continue. And I do have a, a follow-up from our procurement systems manager. Thank you, Randy. We can also follow up with ICI folks as they are working on a new catalog. So that's that's great. I think thanks for that, Randy. Okay, so we have our attachments. Then we, you know, you have your notes. I don't really see where you would utilize a note for this, but you could if you needed to. Reminders, if you wanted to remind someone else to come and take a look at it, you can utilize that. And we get to the summary. And you would double check everything, right? Does this look all right? and submit for approval. Okay, at that point, it's gonna go through the proper approval paths. You won't see the manual or add, uh, automatically approve, right? Because we're just in the training environment, but pretty simple. You know, there's gonna be those questions uh, like Todd had about the uh, ICI catalog. And whenever you run into something like that, you know, you just elevate it and, and ask those questions and we'll make sure we get that answer for you. So any other questions um, involving the release off master contract? Let me just double check that I didn't miss any questions. I just want to confirm with the release begin and end date. So the, not the begin and end date for when I need the service and product. Yeah, I think that was an older question. Yeah, it is exactly the begin. The release begin and end date is when you need the service or product. So. You know, it just makes sense, right? That's it's not a required field in bid buy, but it is a requirement for um, for the comptroller because once again, they're not going to pay on a contract that expired last year. So that's what they're double checking. All right, not seeing any more questions. We'll go ahead and end the call. So once again, nobody work on housework today. You can't do it. Dave said so. And me. Have a great week, y'all. Bye.